Finch fam. Happy Tuesday. It is currently like 7.05 in the morning and I'm about to head to work. I'm working about a half day before I head down to Florida for our first monitoring ultrasound with our high-risk pregnancy doctor. Logan unfortunately does not get to come to this one. We're both just trying to save as much time off work as we can just in case baby girl does decide to come early. So it's me flying solo today. Get into more detail later on, but I just wanted to show you a few clips of my morning routine, which now includes taking my blood sugar. I'm sure you guys saw that clip. I did fail my glucose tolerance test and my number was so high and so elevated that they're not gonna make me do the three hour test. They're just gonna go ahead and assume that I have gestational diabetes. So that is a new thing that we're doing, but honestly, at this point, nothing is surprising me with this pregnancy. So I kind of saw it coming, but I'm gonna go ahead and head to work. We'll get into more detail later on on our way down to Florida. And yeah, so I hope y'all are having a great day as you're watching this and I will see y'all in just a little bit. This part always makes me so nervous. <sighs> that's actually not bad because I got McDonald's on the way to my appointment. So that's actually not too bad for a few hours after eating. So I'm happy with that. Hi guys, first of all, smiling after this appointment, which is a much different reaction than I had after the last video. I wanted to address a couple of things really fast. Um, I did get several messages from personal friends that watched the video and some other people as well just wondering about us switching doctors or providers after the experience that we had last week. But number one, we are choosing the facility that we are using based on their NICU. They have a very well known, very high class NICU. Number two, I did actually see the provider today. She was extremely apologetic about the previous visit. Basically what happened is the day before my appointment, she did leave clinic early to be tested for COVID and then found out the following morning of my appointment that she did test positive. It's kind of just the day that we're living in. I completely get that things come up and some clinics have a delay in giving you your results. But basically my provider did have COVID, which is why she was not there for my appointment and why it was so last minute. Is it as a patient frustrating? Yes, but of course I understand COVID is just kind of affecting everything at this point. So I do understand that. So that did make it a little bit easier to take why she was not there. She was very apologetic, completely understanding about my feelings. She did apologize over and over about the stress caused from last visit. And then we talked about today's visit. So we are good and I'm good with her. I did get down there and we did do our ultrasound. Heartbeat was 155 beats per minute perfectly normal to where she should be at this point. And amniotic fluid levels were right down the middle, right on average, right on target. So we are so thankful for that. Basically everything looked good on the ultrasound. Lila was kicking and active and there were a couple times where they wanted her to hold still and she just was not having it. So we do have a very active but healthy baby in there. The last visit, you know, we were told we gained weight. We've dropped in percentile. We need to do these weekly checks. She said basically the baby has reached, at the last visit actually too, she's reached the weight of viability, which basically means that if the baby were born today, she would weigh enough to survive. So that's no longer a concern or anything like that, which we are thankful for. But also the fact that since her profiles are looking so good at these ultrasounds, that she sees no reason to believe that she would need to urgently deliver the baby anytime soon within the next couple of weeks, which we are also just so thankful for. She said, as long as everything keeps looking good, I could technically carry Lila to term. Obviously that's why they monitor each week because it could change, you know, we don't know why, um, but it could change to where she could become in distress. And then, you know, we'd have to readdress. But as of right now, she said, if everything continues to look this good, then she sees no reason for us to need to be worried about delivering within the next couple weeks or anything like that, which, you know, like I said, just very happy to hear. And then also another great thing of news she said is since everything's looking good there, she is comfortable now letting me do my weekly scans with my OB here in Alabama, and then only coming to Florida every three weeks for my growth scan. That way we can readjust and reassess her weight. The reason that they wait three weeks to do the growth is because just week to week to week, there's really not going to be that significant of a change in her weight to where they, you know, I'm not really sure why actually. <laughs> They've just told me that they like to measure growth and do all of those measurements every three weeks to track that. 
um, rather than doing that week to week. The week to week scans are just to make sure that blood flow is good, her fluid levels are good, and that she is active in there and that her heart rate is normal and not showing any type of distress. So I'm also very thankful that I now get to stay in Alabama for my weekly ultrasounds. That also saves me so much time off of work. I cannot tell you how big of a blessing that is. And then just go to Florida every three weeks for the ultrasounds for the growth scan where they measure everything and give us the estimated weight and we see where she falls there. And another thing that she did reassure me of is that while she is small, there's really no known reason to why she might be small. I've said from the start that one of my levels that was elevated was my placenta factor. So something about how my placenta formed is shaped. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with the placenta, but somehow the way that has formed has caused her to be lower weight. Or she said that we just might be meant to have a small baby. Lila just may be created to be a tinier baby and that's completely normal as long as she's not in distress. And I'm so thankful to finally have somebody say that because that's something Logan and I have said from the start is that maybe God just wanted her to be a tinier baby. And now that a medical person has said it, it's just finally reaffirmed everything that we've been believing and praying for our little girl. So it was a, just such a better appointment today. The doctor gave me her cell phone number, told me to call her with any questions. So it was just a much more positive experience today than it was a couple weeks ago. She completely understood my stress, told me not to worry. That's why we're monitoring her weekly. So it was just a really good appointment and I'm very thankful for that. The day that you're watching this on Saturday, January 22nd, we are finally in the third trimester. We are 28 weeks. And so I'm just so thankful that we've made it to this milestone. Technically the next milestone is gonna be 32 weeks. So we have four weeks till then. Well, I can't believe her due date is getting here so quickly. That's our next milestone. Just keep on checking on her, making sure she's doing good. And I'm just so, so excited that we're here. It's really crazy to think that we found out that she was low birth weight almost six weeks ago when I was like 22 weeks pregnant and I can't believe that six weeks has already like flown by. Honestly, it's been six very stressful weeks, six very hard weeks. I can't imagine people that, you know, have to do high risk pregnancy things from the very beginning or people that, you know, have miscarriages later on in their pregnancy. Like I literally cannot imagine the stress that you're going through because I know we've been stressed here just being first time parents and things like that. So I cannot imagine going through this for longer than we've had to, but our journey's not over. So I will continue to keep updating you guys. Like I said, I did fail my glucose test. So next week's video will actually be like a day in the life vlog. I have my gestational diabetes class. I have my next ultrasound with my OB here in Alabama and my next appointment with him just to make sure that everything is still looking good and a check on her. So that will be kind of a day in the life vlog. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I'm glad it was way more positive than last week's. Thank you guys for everybody that reached out and was like sticking up for me and telling me that I should switch doctors and everything. I completely get it. I mean, obviously that thought crossed my mind too, but we just feel so blessed and lucky that we had a great appointment today. We are fine. We are good with our doctor and everything is great. So we are just so thankful that God is forming this baby how he wants. He created her from the start and he knows the plans that he has for her and for our little family. So we are just, we are all good here and just thankful to be in the third trimester and literally meeting our baby in like 12 weeks or less, which is so exciting and so just what a blessing. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Make sure that you stick around for next week's vlog for a day in the life of a high-risk pregnancy mom. Bye! Mm -hmm.